Hello future engineers, welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're still new to my channel and you like what I'm doing, please don't forget to share my videos to your friends and to your friends' friends. To your younger brothers and sisters who would want to take up engineering in the future. And to your relatives. That's one way you can keep me going inspired and refreshed. Now, if you find my videos interesting and important to your studies, also, please don't forget to subscribe. Hello, future engineers, my subscribers, and my viewers. Here is another problem on uh, complex trust solved by substitute member. This problem is similar to problem 2.5, but I'll solve it again using the another method by substitute member. And we only want to verify the answers in problem 2.5. So analyze the complex trust shown by substitute member. Determine the member forces of CF and AB by substituting CF by member AE. And I plan to solve this again in another method, another substitute member method. But CF is uh, to be substituted by member df to make it uh, more challenging but we expect the same answers of course so i transfer cf to ae but before that i want you to compute the reaction summation forces x so ax is 90 to the left kilonewtons and summation moments about e equals zero so we have ay times eight then plus 90 times 5 equals 180 times 4, and you'll get 33.75 kilonewtons, just like before. Then the vertical reaction at E, RE times 8 equals 90 times 5 plus 180 times 4, will get 146.25 kilonewtons, as shown. So there are two pieces of solution for substitute member first we substitute cf by ae so that means we remove cf leaving joint c to have only two unknown members and by principle these two forces would be zero in the first space so this is ae and in the first space when there are only two unknown concurrent forces then each would be zero and that is already proven and if you want to prove it uh, this is already structural analysis so you should know that because even uh, even students in statics already knew that so zero zero uh, the proof is you should just sum up forces along an axis perpendicular to one of the unknown forces and the other force perpendicular to that axis will have no component about or along that axis so that's why these two member forces will be zero so next we begin we proceed to joint b the angle here would be arc tan of 3 over 4 36.87 degrees while the angle that be makes with horizontal is arc tan of 5 over 8 so 32.005 just like before so 36.87 degrees, this is 32.005 degrees. So summation forces uh, x0 to solve for the force in BE in the first space. So SBE cosine 32.005 degrees plus 90 equals 0. So SBE cosine 32.005 degrees plus 90 equals 0. So SBE is equal to negative 106.132 kilonewtons. Likewise, summation forces vertical equals zero. Uh, by the way, summation forces vertical equals zero. We can solve for SAB, downward uh, positive. So SAB plus SBE, which is negative 106.132 sine 32.005 degrees equals zero. So SAB is equal to 56.249 kilonewtons. Since uh, CD is zero. If we proceed to join D, there are again two unknown forces at D, and 
in equilibrium therefore AD is 0 and DE is 0 just like when we started at C there are two unknown forces only in equilibrium here there are also two unknown forces in equilibrium so each of this force would be 0 so 0 that's also 0 so we then proceed to joint E and the angles would be 32.005 just like that then the angle here is arctan of 2 meters over 4 that's why we have 26.565 degrees and this is SAE summation forces Y or vertical first to solve for SEF so we have negative 106.132 sine 32.005 degrees plus 146.25 equals SEF sine of 26.565. So solving for SEF, SEF equals 201.248 kilonewtons. And if we proceed to joint F, summation forces horizontal. Remember CF, there is no member CF because we removed that in the first space. Then SEF equals S AF by symmetry so they are equal so this is also equal to SAF then summation forces horizontal 100 at E is 100, negative 106.132 uh, leftward positive cosine 32.005 degrees plus SEF which is 201.248 cosine of 26.565 degrees plus SAE equals 0 so SAE in the first space can now be calculated negative 90.002 kilonewtons then as mentioned earlier SAF is also equal to 201.248 uh, kilonewtons you can verify that by summing up forces horizontal they are equal then we just check equilibrium of joint F because we have found SAF and SEF summation forces Y if it is uh, F is in equilibrium to validate our answer answers for member forces above so summation forces Y at joint F is 2 times 201.248 sine of 26.565 degrees minus 180 uh, times 2 because SEF is also 201.248 so I just multiply it by 2 so checking it is zero so that's why it is in equilibrium that validates our answers above we finally check joint a because we already found all the forces so these are the forces at joint a so first summation forces x we have sae which is negative 90.002 plus SAF which is 201.248 cosine of uh, 26.565 201.248 cosine 26.565 degrees plus negative 90.002 then minus 90 this reaction here equals so calculating it is equal to zero so that's why it is also in equilibrium finally let's check equilibrium summation for SY so 56.249 plus 33.75 then minus SEF 201.248 sine of 26.565 degrees and it is also zero so if all the joints are in equilibrium that means our answers in the first space are correct we now proceed to the second phase in the second phase we remove all the loads and apply CF which is we will just denote Q at C and at F as shown here so if we begin at joint C then we proceed to joint F because by symmetry SAF and SEF are equal by symmetry and SBC is equal to SCD by symmetry also at joint C so this were the angle summation forces y equals 0 at c downward positive so 2 times sbc sine of 36.87 degrees plus q equals 0 so times 2 because scd is also sbc so 
the exact value is negative 5, 6 of Q. Negative 0.83333. Don't be surprised in this email. <coughs> then we proceed to joint B. <coughs> at Q, at F first. <coughs> so summation forces X. S E F equals S uh, A F. So again at joint F summation forces X S E F equals S A F. So summation forces Y two times S A F sine of 26.565. The angle here is 26.565 times two plus Q equals zero. So SEF equals SEF equals negative 1.118 Q. Then we proceed to joint B. Take note that by symmetry, uh, if you notice, we have the same angles at B and D. So SBE will be expected to be equal to SAD by symmetry if you look at joint D because SBC is equal to SCD also just like here and SDE is also equal to SAB by symmetry <coughs> summation for SSX equals 0 so SBE cosine of 32.005 degrees plus negative 56Q cosine of 36.87 degrees equals 0 so SBE which is equal expected to be equal to SAD is equal to positive 0.78616Q. Then summation for SY, uh, negative 56Q sine of 36.87 degrees equals SAB, downward SAB plus SBE, which is 0.78616Q sine of 32.005 degrees. So solving for SAB in terms of Q, it is also equal to SDE by symmetry negative 0.916666Q Then we proceed to join A We already found SAD which is also 0.78616Q SAB which is this negative 0.91666Q then SAF which is negative 1.11Q therefore we can solve for SAE so we can solve for SAE by summing up for SSX so SAE plus SAD which is 0.78616Q cosine of 32.005 degrees plus SAF which is quantity negative 1.118 Q cosine of 26.565 degrees equals 0. So SAE in terms of Q would be Q over 3 in decimal 0.33333 Q. So finally we can solve for Q because the there, SAE does not exist actually. It is not part of the original truss so that's why the force of SAE should be equated to zero the force in the first phase plus the force in the second phase must be equated to zero so that's the principle in the lecture part so SAE in the first phase plus SAE in the second phase equals zero in the first phase SAE is negative 90.002 in the second phase it is Q over 3 equals 0. So finally, Q, which is S CF, is equal to negative positive 270.006 kN. So if you can recall in problem structural analysis 2.6, 2.5, this was also the answer. So having found Q or S CF, the other member to be computed would be member AB. And SAB is equal to this, negative 0.91666 of Q plus 
the value of SAB in the first space, which is 56.249. So SAB is 56.249, first space plus second space, negative 0.91666 of Q. Then the value of SAB is equal to negative 191.255 kilonewtons, which can be rounded off to negative 191.3 kilonewtons. Then the value of SAB, the member force of SAB in the preceding problem, structural analysis 2.5, was negative 191.3 kilonewtons, which is the same as this. So that's it for this video. I hope that you were able to understand the explanations and you experience also this method in your civil engineering life while in college and i hope that uh, you have gained another technique in analyzing trusses though this is longer i suggest that you you watch the method in structural analysis 2.5 that's the better way because it is direct way